How can you emotionally detach from a narcissistic person? Let's talk about that because emotional detachment isn't easy. When you're trauma bonded, trauma bonding is intense, okay? It takes over your brain, your body, your emotions, and it creates all kinds of ruminating thinking and inability to function without the toxic person who was in your life. So how can you learn to detach with all that going on? Let's talk about that. My name is Lise Colucci and I'm here to help you understand and heal from, transform your life after narcissistic people have been in it and you have been in toxic relationships. The number one, you, know, you are not alone in this. This is one of the more difficult parts of healing from narcissistic relationships. Getting to the place where you can detach enough where that narcissistic person doesn't matter. There is an indifference toward them. And you can get there. It may take time. So really important is the no contact. We'll talk about low contact after. No contact meaning don't check their social media. Don't talk to their family and friends. Don't ask about them to people you know who know them. Don't stalk them in their workplace, right? Don't watch them. If they live nearby, don't look for their car. They don't exist anymore in your world, okay? And it's letting yourself accept and allow that and creating safety for yourself where you're not the one reaching back to the narcissistic person. I have a couple videos on no contact. I will keep making them so that it helps people as they're moving through this part because it's not easy and I understand that, okay? If you cannot go no contact, then try the low contact. That means all of the above as much as you can do. In other words, don't look at their social media, don't talk to their friends and family. Everything that I just said, except for the fact that you may have to have contact with them for whatever reason in your life. That contact, keep it about the reason that you need to have it. If it's a business, only talk about the business. If it's children, the well-being of the children and logistics about communication regarding the children. In other words, times of drop-off, doctor's appointments, things like that that are necessary. Not, little Johnny was so cute today, look at this picture, okay? That is seeking relationship. If they do it to you, you say nothing, okay? Or you give a thumbs up and that's it gray rock the heck out of it, okay? Yellow rock it as much as you can as well. In other words, throw in the niceties and the pleasantries so that you're not provoking the narcissistic person into sending you word salad emails and texts so that they can force the attention out of you. Are you struggling with this right now, trying to become indifferent or find some emotional detachment from the narcissistic person in your life? Let me know in the comments what would help you, what you're struggling with, and I'll see if I can help walk you through it a little bit in some answers or in future videos, okay? I know it's not easy, but see the bigger picture. Try to see the bigger picture of what happened in the relationship so that you can see that yes, there were good times. Always are, guys, okay? Not always, most often always are. But those good times do not erase how incredibly toxic the bad times were, all right? And how frequently the bad times happened. So look at the relationship in a big picture. Pretend you are far away from it and you're looking down at it as a tableau or a scenario, okay? And see how toxic that really was. Try to see it for a few minutes every day as an outsider. Change your perspective on it. Pretend it's your best friend it happened to, your daughter, your son, whatever, someone you care about. Pretend it's them that it had happened to. And try and see when you are ruminating from that perspective for a few seconds, a few minutes, every time it happens. And see if you tell yourself something different. Here's something that we can do that actually can be beneficial for the rest of your life, okay? We have to remember that when we're healing from these relationships, there was something about us that needed something from that toxic person. These toxic relationships bring out the things you need to work on. They will shine light on corners of your life that you may not experience with healthy people because healthy people don't manipulate you. So what I mean here is what was it 
that you needed? Was it a, a certain type of attention because of something? Do you fear certain things, abandonment, rejection, things like that? Are there places in your life that you can start working on healing and understanding and really nurturing and giving yourself the focus that you deserve so that you can heal those things in your life? If you start doing that for yourself and finding healthy resources, then you will start transforming your life. You will start seeing that the narcissistic person has zero control, okay? If you need help with that, please check out the description in every video. There is coaching, group coaching, and peer support all available there. You might want to check out something to get yourself moving. And if not here, find somewhere else to get the support, okay? And with that, you know, talking to other survivors of narcissists, can be really useful. So the peer support is great for that. The group coaching is great for that. Just So just keep that in your mind if you need it, okay? Another thing to help yourself is just start allowing your feelings. Stop resisting the discomfort. When you're healing from trauma bonding, it isn't comfortable. I'm sorry, it isn't. If anyone has a magic way of making it comfortable, I would love to hear it, but it isn't comfortable. In fact, the processing that takes place is quite uncomfortable. It's quite disturbing and it hurts, okay? That's why support is important, but it's also important to allow those feelings and stop resisting and fighting them and thinking that if you fight them, it's gonna make them go away. Processing doesn't work like that. Oftentimes, we need to grieve it. We need to feel it, to recognize it. This is where I come into a lot of somatic work with people where I wonder where it's existing in their body and how their bodies are holding the tensions from the pain and the suffering and the and all of the things that happen. And then we work through different exercises to help move that energy out of the body. There's all kinds of ways to recognize and nurture these emotions that are going on. Stay away from the narcissist friends and family and people who can't stop talking about your relationship you had with this toxic person. Say it's a sister or a brother of yours and they can't stop talking about your narcissistic mother. They are now kind of a flying monkey in the situation and they are now unsafe for you if they will not listen to your boundary about no talk about the toxic person, okay? And so sometimes we have to stay away from them for a little while or longer. Important here, let go of the idealized thinking that the narcissist can change. That is false hope. People make change if they want to make change. It requires an ounce of empathy to want to make change in relationship style. It is very, very difficult to go from an avoidant relationship style to a healthy, loving one, even when you have empathy. It is a challenge because there are so many defenses and so much built up of protection for self and protection for that person's emotions, right? So that it, would, it requires a whole lot of willingness to be vulnerable and to be open and to be honest. Think about it for a second. Take away the empathy. That person's not gonna wanna do it. Way too much work, and why? So let go of hope that that narcissistic person will be anything other than what they are and always have been. And yeah, okay, I know, they have a good side. Everybody has a good side. People that talk about good sides of incredibly toxic people, all right? That doesn't mean that the bad was okay. That doesn't mean that someone manipulating and hurting you on a regular basis was ever okay. And that doesn't mean that you can hang on to the good and keep it coming. It doesn't work like that. The narcissist needs the negative attention as much as they need the positive. They thrive on the toxic negative supply that they get from conflict. They thrive on it. They may tell you they don't, but they do. If you're liking this content, let me know. Hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe. Let's keep talking, okay? Get rid of the reminders of toxic people. Get the photos off your phone, off your walls. Rearrange your furniture if they're the ones who decorated, right? Get rid of the trinkets that they gave you. If you cannot get rid of everything, box it up. Anything object or item in your home, when you pick it up or look at it, makes you have an emotional reaction that makes you think of them, might be time to put that away for a while, okay? If it's not something you wanna get rid of, just at least maybe for a while, simplify. Go very simple for a bit and see what happens. And speaking of reminders, hit the thumbs up and hit subscribe if you are enjoying these videos and let me know in the comments what kind of content you wanna hear about. So one way to make a narcissist 
not be in your the forefront of your mind is to start creating a life for yourself. Start doing things that you enjoy. And if you don't know what it is, experiment. Start doing new things. Something new will take your attention. So it's just like how when you get a new job, or go take a class, or you're trying to do something brand new that has a little bit of interest for you or a lot of interest for you, and your mind goes so far to that, you almost forget to make dinner or go shopping or do all the other stuff in your life because you're so drawn in and focused. Finding things, even little things that can do an ounce of that will help your mind get off the neural pathway of the narcissistic relationship train, okay? You've been on it a while most likely and you can't stop thinking about the toxic person. Well, if you're thinking about something else with a lot of your mind and from a different place in your brain, then you're able to, for a few minutes, create some indifference there, create space. Make a new association of things. And what I mean by this, you drive by a restaurant you always ate at, find a way to see it different. If your mind says, that's where we ate all the time and you start feeling really sad or really anxious or whatever and it brings back the feelings totally understandable you might want to pull over for a second take a deep breath exhale and say interesting they have a green awning do you see what I did there I made a new association and then drive away it doesn't mean that the feeling goes away right away but making new associations with places and creating new markers in your mind for what that place means can be really useful. So mindfulness is another way that people can find some relief in this, okay? Being present to the moment, being present to yourself. There are so many tools for creating mindfulness in your life. What I will say very simply is be present to yourself. And one way is to observe, to take a deep breath, Give an exhale. Notice that you're here. Okay, I mean, observe what's around you so you're present to your surroundings and observe the feelings that you have. Saying to yourself, oh, I feel whatever it is. I feel sad. I see that. There's the observer noticing the sadness that you feel. And this is one of the tools I use in coaching. So I'm gonna stop with this part because it gets really in depth <laughs> and there's a lot more to it, but the very simple version of observing the emotions that are going on and where they are in your body can be really useful, especially if you are going to seek some help because then there's a place to start, okay? So make sure you not only subscribe, but watch the videos on this channel. Go back and see if there's anything in there. There's whole playlists on healing from narcissistic relationships so that you can see what works for you and try some of this on, okay? You guys take care and I will see you next time.